To be honest, I never, it's never like I wanted to be a paramedic when I was a kid growing up, whatever. I, um, I kind of stumbled into the ambulance service a little bit by accident. So I did my A-levels and uh, through one way or another, I, I, I completely like messed up with my A-levels. I have reset the upper six form. Welcome to Find Your Falls. I'm Hope, your host of the podcast that's here to help you find your true career potential. Join me as I chat with talented people from the Royal Air Force to help you find your force and take the next steps in your career. In season four, we're all about the weekend and using that time to gain skills and confidence as well as challenging yourself in ways you never thought were possible. Today, I'm chatting to Jim, who's a military medic in the Royal Air Force at the weekend. But today we're focusing on his day job, where he's a paramedic for the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Turn around and put it down the sand without taking my eye out. Get this for a forest? Yeah. How on earth? The ambulance service was advertising in the back of the local paper and I thought, that sounds interesting. It makes me feel great at the end of the day, uh, knowing that I have made that difference. Jim, thank you so much for joining us. To start off with, can you tell us about where we are today? So we're at the new, I say new, it's about 18 months since we moved into here, but one of our newest hubs in the, uh, in the Westminster Ambulance Service sort of region. Um, it's the biggest and most advanced hub that we have in the whole region. So co-located here, it's an operational ambulance station, so we have ambulances going out to trouble nine calls day and night out. Um, but also based here are the hazardous area response team, all of our centralised stores, logistics, the medical device engineering team are here, um, and along with my team that I manage on a day-to-day basis, which is the merit um, team. So that's the medical emergency response and intervention team. So it's quite a busy place to work then? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, um, it's 24-7, 365 days a year. There's always people coming in and out, going, people on shift, operational. Um, it, it never stops. So if you've already got that kind of busy work environment, why on earth did you join the Royal Air Force Reserves? Well, so... I've been a paramedic for over 20 years now um, and I've worked sort of in the enhanced or critical care area for the last sort of 15 years, worked on the air ambulance part of my job. Um, For the last couple of three years, I've now kind of gone into a more leadership role within the ambulance service. So I have predominantly an office hours based job, so Monday to Friday, which is quite strange having done sort of like nearly 20 years of doing shift work. Um, But it does leave my weekends free to a degree. Um, And because of my, I suppose my position in my day job where I'm maybe not as clinically operational as I once was um, and I do have a a, a job with it comes with a degree of responsibility Um, having my role with the Royal Air Force as a reservist at the weekend is nice because it gives me a complete sort of opposite um, point of view as to how I work and what I get to do. So in the reserves you're a military medic what does that involve? In short, it's I'm part of a medical squadron um, made up of multidisciplinary um, squadron. So by that, we'll have GPs, dentists, paramedics, nurses, physios, etc. Um, and we are ready to deploy, if need be, to any kind of operational theatre, either in the UK or, or indeed throughout the world. So the, squad, the squadron will have at any one time, whether it's medics, nurses, um, physios, etc., deployed on various different operations... Um, whether that's abroad a supporting troop training, large-scale exercises, or indeed being involved in any areas where we're actually engaged in conflict. Um, and you only have to see the news at the moment to know that you know things can change quite quickly, quite dynamically. Uh, so as a reservist, we're there to support the, the regular military, um, either when they're deployed and leave a bit of a, a, I suppose, a bit of a vacuum, we're there to kind of fill that void, or indeed be deployed as frontline, frontline response. We don't want to go into too much detail about the reserves because we are going to spend a day with you at a Royal Air Force base, aren't we? And chat more about that role. So let's talk about the NHS in more detail. What was it that appealed to you about working for the National Health Service? To be honest, I never, it's never like I wanted to be a paramedic when I was a kid growing up, whatever. I I kind of stumbled into the ambulance service a little bit by accident. So I did my A-levels and uh, through one way or another, I, 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 completely like messed up with my levels i have reset the upper sixth form um and then my plan place i was going to go and do a master's in chemical engineering at um at university um but having spent three years at college i decided that i'd take a year out uh, and i fell into working in a supermarket bakery and that year out turned into three years and then i thought i need to find a career and it sounds a bit cliched but the 
the ambulance service was advertising in the back of the local paper and I thought that sounds interesting did a bit of research and homework uh, and joined the ambulance service as a trainee paramedic. So you mentioned in a newspaper is where you saw the job I imagine the application process is a little bit different now 20 odd years on am I right? (laughs) Yeah very much so it's it's now a degree based profession being a paramedic so um, there's a couple of routes you can take into that one is to apply direct as as an external uh, student there's a number of universities across the country that will offer a, a degree in uh, paramedic science, for example. Um, but here in, in Westminster Exam Service, we run quite a successful student paramedic programme where we'll take people on, give them some initial initial training, where you then go out and get some operational experience whilst you're a kind of a, an earn-while-you-learn type thing. And then eventually you'll go and do um, a top-up programme through the university to come out with your, your degree um, and you kind of take a salary sacrifice for your, for your uni fees um so you could, i suppose in, in essence it's an apprenticeship that we offer here um but but you can be an external student go to university in the traditional sense as well what kind of skills and characteristics does a person need to possess in order to be a good paramedic the phrase that's often thrown about with being a paramedic is jack of all trades master of none which i always think is a bit unfair on paramedics um someone once said about is more about being a specialist generalist because you don't know what you're going to get sent to at any given moment um and it's not like you can specialise in any particular area of, of medicine. We do get sent to everything and anything. Um, but the skills I think you need is obviously you need to have, you need to have the, the aptitude to be able to understand all of the anatomy and physiology that you learn at university. So how the body works, what affects things, what happens with drugs. Um, but equally, the most important skills to be able to put that into real life, you need to be able to talk to people. You need to be able to drive a vehicle. Um, and you need to have the experience to, you know, potentially st- step up in quite a stressful situation um, and, and take charge of a situation to be able to, to support colleagues or direct colleagues into how you run resuscitation, how you give care. Um, you, you, you're, you're very, it's, it's a really autonomous job. You know, if you work the, the p- parallel to nursing or physio, you'd work in quite a supported environment in a hospital where you've got people who are, you know, can you just run, can I run this past you? When you're out on, a param- on an ambulance as a paramedic, it's just you and your crewmate. So you, there is quite a degree of responsibility and autonomy to the decisions that you do or don't make. When things get challenging, how do you remain motivated? So I think for me, it's, it's very simple. It's about being able to, to give good care to patients and influence the outcome that they might have at potentially you know, a very, very significant moment in their life. My role specifically as a critical care paramedic here, um, we respond to the most critically ill and injured patients that present to the ambulance service. Um, I'm working with a, you know, a really experienced and highly trained team to be able to deliver some, you know, quite big interventions, things that you know traditionally would have only ever been done in hospital. Um, but being able to influence the outcome of how a patient, you know, it's, it's, it sounds a little bit, bit cliché, but you do get those cases that you go to and actually think you know if we hadn't done x y and z or been part of that you know whatever happened to that patient then that would have had a very different outcome you know i suppose again saving people's lives can you give us some examples of the types of critical care cases that you might attend yeah so my team goes to say all of the really really sick patients so we can go for anything from shootings stabbings car accidents uh, you sort of more trauma-based cases um, but we also go to a lot of the sick medical patients, so your cardiac arrests, your heart attacks, um, people with really extreme difficulty uh, in breathing, um, people fitting, asthmatics. Um, it could be a, any range of, of, of those kind of things, but generally the, the more poorly people are the ones that we go to as our, in my team. What I'm hearing from you is that what motivates you is making a difference. Yeah, I think so. I think it's it's about playing your part as well because, you know, a lot of the patients that we go to, sometimes it might be, say, for example, you go to a patient in cardiac arrest. We can have all the fancy kit in the world, but it's about, you know, if that patient hasn't had CPR from a bystander or a defib that's uh, accessible in public, then their outcome is not going to be great. And we build on that. Uh, and equally, you know, whatever we do, it's about giving the right care and taking the patient to the right hospital. But we're just part of that chain of, of what happens. So, you know, the care that they might receive in A&E, potentially going to have an operation, intensive care, right through to the physios that might rehab a patient that's had a lot of, you know, traumatic injuries, broken bones, etc. 
what we want to do is have that person that when it's their time to leave hospital, they walk out almost in the same condition that they were before they'd had their accident. What advice would you give to someone who's wanting to become a paramedic? It's a fantastic job and, you know, I've seen a lot of change in, in, in being a paramedic over the last 20 years and equally I, I'm excited about what change might come in the future. It's a job, I think, that it offers unpredictability, it offers challenge, it offers... Um, it, there's not many jobs where when you turn up in the morning you've got no idea who you're going to see or where you're going to go. So for people that uh, would like to be a paramedic, I think you've got to be relatively comfortable with, with that. Um, there's an area of responsibility that comes with being being a paramedic, but fundamentally it is a great job. Um, and uh, you know, I would uh, anyone that's kind of got an urge to explore it or, or do it, I would say you, you know, have a look at what's out there. Look at the uni courses. Come and speak to people at the ambulance service. We have recruitment engagement days type things like you can go and find out, speak to people, see what the job's about. Um, but if it, if it's something that you're interested in, go for it. Obviously, 23 years you've been a paramedic and you mentioned that you've got a leadership role now. How do people respond within the NHS when you said, you know what, I'm going to go be Royal Air Force Reserve? Well, we're quite fortunate. The, the ambulance service here in the West Mids, we, we, we have quite a lot of reserves, whether that's, um, you know, paramedics, but even some of our non-clinical roles. So those people who might work in IT, fleet, um, the workshops, mechanics. There's, there's a lot. We have, you know, we've got eight thousand people here, and we're actually very, very supportive. We have a military network within this, within the, the organisation to support people who are either veterans or reservists. So, um, one of the things that's great is that I knew I'd have the support of my my manager and and the, the, the organisation in a wider sense. Um, and I think I think there's a recognition of, you know, between the blue light services and the military, there is a degree of crossover. So. You know, the skills that I have from my day job really, really help my military career and vice versa. So the things that I learn when we, we train and exercise in my reserve role support my day job here as well. So it's a really kind of like two-way street type relationship that works really, really well. You mentioned this kind of training there, but are there any other ways that the reserves helped you in your day job? Yeah, I think sometimes the the military role, you get, you know, it's a it's a discipline structure and rank is very important and again there's a crossover with the ambulance service and I think sometimes um, you know that supports me in my my day job here but the other thing I think that really helps is it's a, it's a good change of scenery where um, the reason I really enjoy my role in the reserves is that I don't have to have that level of responsibility so for me it's a chance to go and escape um, I, ha- I have my social circle there as well to a degree um, and I think having that kind of like something different means that when I come back after a training weekend or some exercise through the reserves I'm kind of in a better place when I come back to work to do the to do the day job. As someone who can say hey look I've been doing this a long time I'm now in the reserves they both serve each other very well what would you say to someone who is in the NHS thinking about becoming a reserve? Well say firstly my experience is that you'd be very supportive to do it the NHS in the you know, in all aspects, you know, I've got colleagues in, in hospitals working in other parts of the NHS. The NHS is very supportive of, the, you know, being a reservist in the military um, because of the, the things that, you, you know, when, you, when you're away with the military as, part, as a reservist, what you then bring back to your, your civilian NHS role. Um, so firstly, you'd be very, very supported. Secondly, I do think there is a lot of crossover. The, the, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity within the military for people who have NHS careers. Um, predominantly, I suppose, when I say that, I'm talking about clinical opportunities. So whether you are a nurse, a physio, a dentist, a GP, um, a paramedic, there's opportunities within the military to do lots of different things and to use your skills that way. Equally, I've got paramedic colleagues who are reserves and decided that they want to leave the medical side of things to the day job um, and want to go off and join, you know, just the military, the green military, as it were. So I've got a, one of my, my team members here um, he's he's in the army reserves, and he just as, as an infantry soldier doesn't worry about the clinical side of things. He just likes to go and be a soldier on the weekend and do that way. So, you know, which, whichever kind of area of, of the reserves interests you, there's a way to do it. And I, th- I think as an NHS employee, you're you're very supported and well set up and well placed to do that. It's good to try new things and widen your horizons because you never know what's going to stick. Absolutely, yeah. It, it, there's you know, the military offers a lot of opportunities. Um, and it's a bit of one of those old classic things about joining the reserves is that you get to you get to travel the world and be paid for it, and that really is true. There's so much opportunity to go out 
um, and do that as part of your military role to be involved in exercises, training opportunities, um, and also to know that fundamentally you're doing, doing your duty to the country. The military's there to, you, you know, protect us as a nation. Um, and if, you know, heaven forbid anything ever does happen in the future, to be able to play your part is, is a real kind of motivating factor, certainly for me on a personal level. Again, making a difference. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you so much for taking some time out of your very busy schedule to share more about your day job and the reserves. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me for Find Your Force. I've really enjoyed chatting to Jim today. And if you've liked what you've heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review and share with your friends, family and colleagues. It really does make a difference.